Hello guys, my name is Adam Chino and I want to welcome you to my advanced macro script guide for specifically the language AutoHotKey. I already did a really basic guide to how to make something like this where you just simply execute a sequence of button presses. However, now I will focus on how to make it work far more intuitively, how to make it faster and how to make it even in such a way that you can also give it to other people and they will know how to use it. So let me demonstrate the speed. I think that's probably the most important part of this. This is GTA, a very, very good game to practice your macro skills because there's a huge amount of things like, for example, requesting BSD or armor or just simply buying more ammo you can see there's a lot of pressing of buttons there's also the option to fire rockets very quickly this was manually and as you can see, I immediately was able to buy more rockets. Let's try full auto. As you can see, I can move freely while doing it. I can aim, of course. I can even aim down the sides like that. Same goes for other weapons. Or even use different you know, things like sniper rifles to fire them faster. So this is firing it normally. With a really precise macro, you can actually do something like this. You can see it's faster than the recoil is resetting. That's what I meant in the loadout video about GTA, where hustle bike is probably a better option. If I had a surprise it would go up much faster. So this was pretty good, right? Let's try BSD. Yeah, you will be hard pressed to smash even two buttons or three in a row so fast as the macro literally does like 20 presses. There are also other options like teleportation or other useful things like instantly turning on thermals that way you don't need a thermal scope and obviously these things will work the same for other games so just like minecraft where you unloaded a lot of those crossbows very quickly I also have a way to stop them so now when I press any of my hotkeys nothing happens which I will also demonstrate how to do because there is actually an option in AHK called uh, pause script but that doesn't really work reliably or at least at all sometimes so yeah, let's go over there I think this was good enough of a demonstration okay, so this is it First of all, you can see a slight difference. I should probably do it like this, where I pull up the old one and compare it to the new one. Or it's not really a new one for me, but it's the one from the last guide. First of all, I have here a few more controls. Set bench lines is very, very important because for some reason, AHK has like a default uh, 
speed at which it executes things, which is not instant, which is really weird. It also sets some various delays for certain commands, like there are, these are window commands and these are uh, control commands. Usually you don't use them, but it's nice to have them at the top, so you always know there is no initial delay. Default mouse speed. I don't really use it here, but it would be really good when you want to make things that, for example, remove uh, recoil, which might be interesting, for example, for the sniper spam, where it would simply pull the mouse slightly down after each shot. Max threads per hotkey. This is actually really nice because it enables these uh, loops where you activate them and then you can just hold down left mouse button and fire rockets as I just demonstrated. Basically turning the uh, normal rocket launcher into a, basically a supercharged version which fires twice as fast at least. Yeah, the, here, as I mentioned, GTA is insanely good for this uh, because you can set key delay and mouse delay to zero and it will work. Like you saw how it really efficiently, really quickly opened and closed the uh, menus. I can also demonstrate to you what I talked about last time, which is send mode input. And mode input. Yeah, I'm pressing my hotkeys and nothing is even happening at all. Since the delay is zero, it literally just doesn't send any information about a button being pressed. Like, basically nothing works right now. I'm pressing the keys and nothing is happening. If I would add the... increase the delay, for example, to at least 10 milliseconds or something like that, it might start working, but why bother if you can just use the normal thing? Let's turn this off. So yeah, that's send mode input for you. What this section here is, this is actually a really cute section. It basically allows you to uh, name your scripts. It's not necessary in any way, shape or form. You could literally just delete this and copy this here. For example, this is armor. And do something like this and it would work without any issues but I, I prefer it like this so at least I remember what is what oh no so, shit Sadly, it has to be done in two commands. I can't just set armor equ equals or assign it to this and then just have armor here. You actually need this hotkey armor, yeah, this thing basically. Also, for some reason, it requires a return statement at the end. Sometimes, sometimes it works without it, which is just ridiculous, but whatever. This thing, running, is what I use to stop the entire script. This is basically these things are basically variables. Like you have in C, you can have something like x equals I don't know twenty five, right? And when you assign it like this, it basically means it's not just a string of uh, 2 and 5, it's actually a number, or in this case a hotkey. The next part here are uh, functions. These are just like in 
any other programming language they are actually really really similar to other programming languages except the return statements being far at the end because it's really strange but in this uh, language you basically use return as end of a function rather than just having return statements normally like in Java for example this basically allows me to change the individual hotkeys. So I have interaction menu at C, pulse menu F, sniper rifle at 1, heavy weapons at 3, and it's called special weapons by the game, but that's basically just the throwable stuff like the sticky bomb. This also, first of all, allows you to uh, be able to name these hotkeys or not exactly hotkeys, it's basically like functions that send the right button in this case. But it also allows a different user to quickly change them, right? Like, for example, interaction menu might be like M for some people. Which is ridiculous because it's insanely far away from your fingers. So, however, some of them, as you can see, are not needed since they are the same for everyone, at least I hope so. But of course you can basically turn everything here to that. Now let's look at some of the more simpler scripts, which basically just do something similar to what we did here in Minecraft, where they just execute a sequence of commands. For example, this was I think this was unloading. Yeah. First of all, you don't need to write them underneath like this. I just did it for simplicity. When I was making this in the video, you could just remove the send and write them like this behind each other. And we also have this if statement, which basically checks if the running uh, variable this one is set to true, then it executes. And it executes by activating this function, which basically opens the interaction menu, and then entering the sequence of up, down, enter, enter, and whatnot. Same goes for BST. Something similar also works for buying ammo, but I found out you actually need some delay when buying ammo. I can demonstrate this. If I remove this delay here, and I try to buy heavy weapon ammo. I have to also launch it. Oh yeah, I still have the send mode input. I was wondering why it's, well, it's not working. If you look closely, it basically just doesn't register that I use the uh, weapon. It basically thinks I'm still using pistol or the default ammo. You could try and exploit this. Where you would go to inventory ammo and as it sets to the pistols, you would actually hit to the right three times. But I very much prefer not to do that because this is actually inconsistent. For example, if your game is lagging, this will in fact fail or simply just be slow enough to a point where it recognizes this. And this is one of the things I want to highlight, and that is sometimes in these scripts you just find these weird game mistakes where the developers were not thinking much when they're making it. 
and also 200 milliseconds in this case is really little and I also used this which is actually a really nice way to communicate the the macro is running to the player because that's a huge issue sometimes especially if you don't want to use graphical interface especially since that's usually not even possible on games that are full screen or at least not really easy to do on the games that are full screen therefore having the weapon basically switch four times which all it does it basically just shows me that the script is running since it's so fast it basically just keeps either keeps the same weapon or if I have a sniper rifle it keeps the pre-selected weapon which is really useful and it's a really I would say advanced strategy to actually make the macros far easier to use because you don't need to guess when it's working and when it's not however if you look at this thing here no kids spamming this is something that's really critical to be fast you can see this is quite complicated right it just doesn't check if it's running also this is the pause thing it basically sets running to the opposite value or the other value so for true to false or vice versa it also checks if it's running inside the loop and when it's when this variable is false it also stops the loop immediately this is really useful you can sometimes forget about loops that are running so you can just press pause twice or whatever button you have it assigned to I think I have it to this slash to the opposite direction and I'm also using something interesting here I'm also using my own function called exact sleep and this is something I basically had to figure out because if we go now into Chrome we look up something like click speed test and I have here a example for this it's my auto clicker you can see this uses some really complicated let's say commands it just doesn't send a left mouse button to be pressed it actually sends a DLL call and then it sends another one these DLL calls they are basically uh, requests to the uh, API of Windows so this goes straight for Windows but that really doesn't make much difference at most speeds but I want to show you the difference between a program like, like this this is exact sleep and one that uses the normal sleep I will obviously explain how the function works and here let's try another one and here we use exact sleep one I have this actually randomized Let's try to rather this might perfect. Set this to I don't know A. This sent it to B. Now let's see what happens when I press A. This is exactly 32 clicks per second that's 
the one using normal sleep. But that doesn't make sense, right? Like, 1000, this shouldn't be in milliseconds, right? 1000 divided by 4, that's 250, right? That's way more than 32. Yeah, that's basically a problem of this. For some reason, sleep is insanely inaccurate. I don't know why they decided to do this, so I had to basically invent my own function, which is just flat out better. It's still not perfect. If I press B, this is 220, 215. Yeah, and uh, oh shit, I crashed the site, I think. Yeah, okay, let's try a lower value to not crash it. Let's try 4, just to demonstrate. It does, in fact, still fail even at longer timings. So let's try A. It's still 32 for some reason. It still is messed up. And when I try B, this is really close to 125 actually. There is some slight imperfection, I'm not sure exactly why. But it's already way more precise. Especially even if you make the delay longer, it will be even more precise compared to the actual value. And this also can be adjusted. This is also perfectly consistent. As you saw here, when I changed it to from 2 to 4, it didn't do any difference. But when I change it here, it actually does do something different. So, this function just works as a really Maybe similar if you have ever heard the term game loop. It's basically quite similar to it, where first of all I have to convert this. I have to m multiply this number by ten thousand because the DLL calls as get system time work well with multiples of one hundred nanoseconds basically, which is just uh, such a weird. It's not one microsecond, it's basically one tenth of a microsecond. Then what I do is I save current time into something called last, it's basically just a variable. I also make current equal last, but this is just the pretext, this is not so important. It's just mostly to declare the variables and make it so that it works for the first try. And what I then do is I subtract these two values and check if they are if it's smaller than time. If yes, then we will just try again. But since this loop is not perfect, it does not execute in zero time as things do, for example, in Minecraft, it basically executes as fast as it basically can, and if it's larger or equal to time, then it will just return, and the script can continue. This is insanely overpowered way to create something that measures time. For example, I was dealing with Java FX and I had to use this quite a bit there. But also in other languages. These, these DL calls, you can Google them online, there are many of them. This is pretty much the one that just returns system time. I, I love how it says system time as file time. I have no idea what that's even trying to say. So yeah, that was a demonstration why you sometimes need custom functions. 
So let me demonstrate how easy it is to actually implement. We had it here with the buying of ammo. All we need to do is either copy it like this or just type in. So to 200. I measured this. Like, and longer delays sleep is pretty fine to be honest. Like, you would probably not see much of a difference. Same like with the loading. Like, for example, you saw that just inputting 500 milliseconds worked pretty decently in Minecraft. Even though it's the exact time it should take. Here we also had it with the. Oh yeah, we also had it here with buying bombs. We also, I also made some for teleportation, but those are basically the same thing. Just here, I had to add a delay because it, for some reason the delays were much longer. Usually, you just try multiples of fifty milliseconds. That's pretty okay. Like, it's very unlikely that you would find something like, for example. 180 that would work every single time, but 150 would not, and 200 would. Very unlikely. Like multiples of 50 milliseconds. The, like your, the human reaction time, if you train a lot, is like 200 milliseconds. For a normal untrained person, it's like 300 milliseconds. Yeah, that's basically unnoticeable the difference in these timings. I won't go too much over the details of this, like it's just GTA. Just for you know, you can only fire things every 600 milliseconds in this game, at least with the weapon switch animation. The way how you determine these timings is similar how we did here. You either look them up, or simply just try. Just like I said, pick a time and see. If is it too short? Okay, add. If is it too much resubtract until you basically find something. But you can find, for example, something like 550. That would work most of the time, but not if the game starts lagging. And there are many games that really quickly and really easily start to lag. These loops that are here, they are basically the same thing as pausing, except here the Local variable is not even declared because AHK is just overpowered in general. You just need something like this to switch again the values between true and false, or 1 and 0, whatever it is by default. Then just while it's true, run the program. That's all you need to do. But you need the max frets per hotkey, actually. Also, if you are curious how to for example, fix something notepad, for those who don't, don't know. For example, let's say I don't like that I have a you don't obviously need to always use notepad. For example, I don't like this space here. While space and toggle, I press Control. I think it's yeah, it's Control H. You enter this sequence you want to replace. The sequence you want to replace it with. Just hit replace all. And as you can see. Nicely replace them. So this is how you can easily fix mistakes if you have done them, or just fix timings. So yeah, let's try and implement this into the Minecraft thing. So what we need to do, we need to copy this function. It can be actually at the end, which is very convenient. We also want to copy probably some of these things here at the top. I usually just copy them. You can write them yourself, like 
it's not too difficult. And let's also have the ability to pause things. I'm just copying this like like obviously you probably won't have this next to you or you can just go into my discord server where, where these things are uploaded or at least will be hopefully I have decided they are perfect enough the next thing here you just replace this oh I have something running I think Yeah, if you get this sad thing, you go control, alt, delete, task manager. You hover over it, and now AHK stops working. Let's see if it's helped. Yeah, as you can see, it's no longer messing with me. And you also want to remove one of these things. This all might, may seem trivial to you, but it's actually way harder make, to figure this out because there is simply just a huge lack of information about this. Just finding people who actually use send in these two brackets instead of just doing this it's already really difficult so the things I'm showing you right now are far more advanced than you will probably ever find now let's do another one of the hotkeys let's say I think B was firing also these things here what do they mean? the dollar sign basically means the hotkey will not be triggered by the script itself so if I would want to send this slash somewhere I would not fear that I ac accidentally trigger the uh, script or the pause in this case and this thing I don't even know what, how to call it it's like a wave you use if you want to allow the key to function normally that basically means that for, for example it's usually not the most useful thing on pausing but especially on these other ones because even if the script would be paused I would for example not be able to use X or Z or any of these other buttons to type in chat even when they wouldn't do anything the script still just like occupies them so you can't use them to write something So yeah, let's do it would be a nice combination to fire. Know, let's keep it at B, I think. How would I let's say fire put B here? Now we place this. Now we can have another one. Let's swap it like this. I prefer things to be alphabetically sorted, to be honest. Now 
now let's add reload. Okay, also let's get rid of all of these settings. Also, while I'm doing this other tedious task, the other thing with making macros like this, it allows you to be always sure that your macro is the fastest. That way you don't start accidentally believing that some dude on the internet figured out a way how to fire rockets faster in GTA by just spamming a button faster because now you know for certainty that this is literally milliseconds precise like if you would change the timing just by a few milliseconds it would not work anymore as you saw with the fast clicking in the click speed test yeah this looks a lot nicer now we can actually keep this set key delay. I don't, or we could try to set it to one or zero or something like that. But I doubt Minecraft would accept that. And now we'll just replace exact sleep or sleep with exact sleep. I could have used the replace function, but it's still rather fast. Yeah, and just like this, we basically converted something that had quite a lot of flaws, but was really difficult for people to use. Like in this case, we don't need the these functions here because, well, it's very unlikely someone would change the numbers in Minecraft to represent different slots but of course you can that would be too much of work or we can we could try that just for fun let's say and this here so turn here let's say call it second slot Send number two. That's what we do here. So we could just do this. Yeah, this is how we would convert it. I don't think it's necessary right now. Yeah, this is basically it. This is how do you can create yourself a really, really powerful macro script. I have also a few more to show you. For example, if you noticed scripts, uh, left mouse button clicker. I have here something called left mouse button clicker wait. And this is actually pretty cute because it uses this loop while and here it should be more like this to be honest just to be more consistent get key state basically checks the if your key is pressed or not left bu mouse button so l button in this case and is pressed 
it's really weird. It's, I don't know why it can be here, like true, false, or pressed, released, or something like that. And also use this key weight, left mouse button, T05. This is pretty weird of a command, but what it does, it basically just waits for the left mouse button to be pressed for half a second. Then, when it's pressed, it will continue to click. And what is here, this declaration, I have seen some people mess this up, where they put it above the function, or outside of the loop. You have to have it inside. It basically creates a variable. Oh no, this is actually, this is the command. This is the name of the variable it creates. And it's a random value from minimal delay, or you can just set it to 15 and this to 35 to max delay in this case. So this is basically something that would click every 20 milliseconds, but not always keeping the same interval between the clicks. So yeah, this is really useful if you want to know something cute. And I also have here save it. So I have here something that holds right mouse button. It's actually insanely simple. All you need to do is basically do it like with the loops. But instead, you just send right mouse button down, and when it's pressed again, you send right mouse button up. That's all there is to it. Yeah, this thing you want to use if you want to know a color and coordinates of a pixel. I can demonstrate you how this works. It's really simple. Wherever I aim, let's say I aim here at this stuff, I can't exactly tell what color it is. Yeah, it says me the exact position and the color it is hex format. These two numbers are from 0 to 256 and the same goes for R, G and V, square, red, green, blue. This is really cute if you want to uh, try yourself to uh, read your screen, but I, I don't think this is the best way to do it, because with this you can kind of go into sort of hack territory, also with moving your mouse, like you could make something that would instantly fire into someone, for example like in GTA, Oh, it kicked me. Uh, when you have the marksman rifle, your crosshair turns red. If you aim at your opponent, you could theoretically make something that would detect that and immediately fire when that happens. But that's really close to using an aimbot or something that would induce your recoil, for example, something like Battlefield. That's really, really close to the sort of boundary between flat out hacks and uh, macros. <laughs> but there is theoretically nothing stopping you from doing that. What else do I have here interesting? I also have this, which is not so well optimized because I rarely ever use it. Now you're using something really interesting, and that is, to, I basically abuse the Windows Zoom, or if you press Win button and plus, it will actually zoom in like this. I don't know if it's even recording this. It's called the magnifier. 
and you can actually abuse this to get artificial zoom. I have seen a lot of people try and miserably fail at this, for example in Rainbow Six Siege, after they removed the high zoom optics from that game, or at least reduced them to only a few guns. Well, you can literally get this. Also, here are some other interesting ones. For example, this is something that releases all your movement keys. Oh, actually, I even used here send input. Well, in this case, it might actually be better, to be honest, because I don't care if it actually sends the release key thing. I just want it to stop. For example, when I accidentally hold W and I jump out of the helicopter in Battlefield, I can literally kill myself if I hold, forget to release W. So this fixes it. And these are mostly it, to be honest. Yeah, I also have this. If you want to mess with someone, this is basically a key log. When you click it, you can actually change this to have the logo of Google Chrome, for example, or whatever the person is using. You can actually make this a lot more sophisticated, like run any sort of application with these scripts. I want this is what I wanted to show you. But you can also use files, you can append to files. You can also read files with this, just like with other programming languages. And what I just did here is just append to file whatever the person presses. The reason why I call it SVC host is basically uh, because if you open task manager, you will see a lot of programs especially in details, called svchost.exe. So yeah, that's pretty cheesy, because that basically makes sure the person never never notices this is running. But I would not recommend doing this to anyone. It's cute, but it's not designed to hurt people. Please don't use it. Like, you can do things like block input from a person open his own email and send to yourself his all of his passwords with programs like these. So you have to be really careful with this. I also show you how to convert this to a let's say this left mouse button clicker to convert this to an exe file. All you need to do is compile script. And now you have OMB clicker toggle.exe. As you can see, I have nothing running. I can enable it now. And as you can see, it's working just fine. These ridiculous ads. Shit. Yeah, that's all I got for you today. Please. Like, subscribe, and I hope you learned something new. Have a good day.